there's as many angles into God's love as there are human beings and as there are ways to imagine. So there's really not one answer, but I'm going to give you one answer that is one out of many options. And that is to release any, on, any and all desire that you have for a particular outcome from their end. And the thing is, we can never truly let go of something we truly desire. But we, for the most part, what we think we want, what we think we desire, the little wants, the little greeds, the little neediness, the little expectations of this or that outcome or this or that behavior from other people, those things are not really desires. They're not really the calling from our higher selves or from God ultimately that help us usher ourselves into the next direction of our lives, into the next evolution of our lives, which is what desire, the power of desire is. It's like a call, um, a phone call from higher self or from God, if you will, that's calling you forth into a new way of thinking, a new way of shaping, a new way of creating, a new direction for you to learn into and, and express. So I rarely speak against desire, unlike a lot of sort of enlightenment based teachings, because I prefer a different kind of understanding of desire. Um, I'm coming to your question, this is this context. So the true desires, it's my view that for the most part, not everything is possible, but for the most part, we cannot give them up. You can change what you do, you can change how you look at it, you can actively pursue it or not pursue it, but what you truly desire, you will truly desire until it's fulfilled. Does this make sense, first of all, just as context? So when I say for you to let go of your desires for any sort of outcome or response from your friends, to be different than what it is. That's not really a desire. What you desire might be something along the lines of harmony mm -hmm. or the desire you might be having at the core of who you are that's close to God's love is for you, both you and them, to experience and share in the recognition of God's love mm -hmm. and the rapture that's possible and the freedom that's possible and the, the love that's there, that's real, that you know is true. And so you recognize that that interaction with your friends just now doesn't quite reflect or is not quite commensurate, doesn't quite match with that feeling that you have of God's love is, is here and let's share in this joyfully. Let's, let's love each other, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a mis mismatch. The image of your life of that situation doesn't match with what you know, with the God in you. And so your true desire is for them to know God. Let's put it just in, in, in those words for now. Your true desire is for them to recognize love. And for yourself, of course, to be even more deeply in recognition of that, in acknowledgement of that, in praise of that. So your true desire is not that they respond differently, you see? That's a mistranslation of the mind. Your true desire is that they recognize who they are. And I mean, that's hard to accomplish in a, in a split second when someone is reactive and they may not even be open to these kinds of teachings or understandings. And it's not your job to try to make them understand or feel God's love. It's not expected of you. And in fact, it's probably more self-serving, not intentionally, but mechanically self-serving to try to get them to change or recognize God in that moment or to surrender to love and to like boo boo boo. But the way that you can communicate your desire and fulfill your desire for your friends to know and recognize that they are God's love and that you are God's love and that you're here to rejoice together in praise of that, in recognition of that, in enjoyment of that, is by being an example of it. And God, how would God love the situation then is the question to ask yourself. If you were completely convinced of your invincibility, your eternity, timelessness, your infinite power, your infinite freedom, that there's nothing they could say or do or not say or not do that would have the slightest impact on your existence. What, <laughs> what if you had that confidence, that conviction, that faith, that union with God, then how would you love how would your love express itself in that situation or right now in response to that? Do you already have a sense of that? Yes. Wonderful. You care to, care to share it in like two or three sentences? 